Having a 12 volt fridge for extended camping trips is worth every penny. I can stay out for weeks at a time without having to buy ice, I don't have to worry about having soaking wet food, and it takes up a lot less space than a cooler. These days you have a huge range of options and brands when it comes to buying a 12 volt fridge. On the low end you've got something like this, it's around $300, but they can go well up over $1,000. In this video, I'm gonna take a look at what you get for your money and see if you can get away with buying one of the really cheap ones or if it's worth spending a little more. I've had this cheap fridge for a couple of years now. It says stay cool on the side, but this thing sold as Costway on Amazon. If you watched my original review on it I did about a year ago, you'd know I had a few complaints. One of them was the compressor, the other was the insulation, and then finally it has the worst 12 volt plug that I have ever used. I've always wanted to know what difference does having a name brand compressor make? So thanks to Ice sending me this fridge, we can actually test it out and find out. In terms of form and features, these are both very similar fridges. They're both hinged at the back, they both have the latch at the front that allows you to open them. Inside, they both have a little basket that you can store your food in. They both have a non-cooled area at the back. They both have LED lights that turn on when you open it up. On the outside, there's a temperature display. On the Costway, it's at the front. And then on the Iceco, it's at the back. They both have 12 volt and 110 volt inputs. Although with the Iceco, there's two separate inputs, which is nice because you can leave them both plugged in and switch them out as necessary. Where with the Costway, you have to unplug it from the back of the fridge before you can switch it out. They also both have max power mode so that you can cool quickly, as well as an eco mode, which is best for running on a battery. And then they both both have a low battery cutoff so that if you were running this off a starter battery or off like an AGM battery, you're not gonna kill it. There are a few differences between the two. The first one you're gonna notice when you go to buy these is that the Costway is a lot cheaper. Around $300, a little over $300, it's one of the cheapest fridges you can buy, where the Iceco is a little more. If you go to the Iceco website and use the code REVERE, you can get 12% uh, off and it brings it down to around one and a half times the price of the Costway or $150 more. For the price, you definitely get better insulation with the Iceco ice co fridge. The Costway, when it's running, it's cold to the touch on the sides and on the bottom, where it's just not with the ice co. The ice co also comes with a fridge cover, which obviously helps with the insulation a little bit more. And we'll take a look at how the covers affect the insulation, as well as the difference in energy consumption in a few minutes. According to the labels, you're also not allowed to store children inside the Costway fridge, where with the ice co, I, I guess you are allowed to. For legal reasons, I'm required to tell you that you absolutely must not do that. Do not store children in your fridge. The biggest difference between the two, however, is one that you can't immediately see from the outside and you can't actually tell while it's running. I'm going to have to take the back off to show you. Now that the back covers are off, you can probably tell just by looking at it that there is a difference in the quality between the two. In the Costway fridge is a compressor brand that I've never heard of. It says Ningbo on the side, and when I look up the serial number on AliExpress, they're selling around $15. And that's gonna be the style of compressor that's sold in any of these cheap fridges. So the Costway, the Alpacol, and then just, I guess, any of the others that you see really cheap on Amazon. In the Iceco, you get a Secop compressor. Secop's a company that was formerly known as Dan Foss, and that's really the name brand when it comes to 12 volt compressors. All the major fridge companies use Dan Foss or Secop compressors in their fridges. Now, obviously, you're paying for the name, but what other difference does it make? So we're gonna run a series of tests with these two fridges and see really how they compare in terms of performance. To test the performance of these two fridges, I wanted to see how long they would both last running on this, which is a Jackery 240. It's an 18 amp hour battery at 13.2 volts. And I made the test as fair as possible. I had both of them set to 36 degrees Fahrenheit in a room that had an ambient temperature of 70 degrees. I filled them both with 20 drinks. I even had the drinks the same flavor to try and keep everything consistent. In the first test I did with these, I had the drinks and the fridges at room temperature, and I let the fridges cool the drinks. And the goal of that was to see how efficient the compressor is at cooling and getting it down to a certain temperature, as well as how long it would take to cool. Just looking at the temperature of the fridges, the Costway reached 36 degrees first after about 30 minutes, which would imply that it's the best at cooling, but I did notice that the temperature continued to rise afterwards. After two hours, the Iceco fridges reached the target temperature too, and after about three and a half hours, the fluctuations in the Costway temperature started to slow down. It's really hard to judge when the Costway actually reached 36 degrees, and I think it is at this stage at about three and a half hours in, when the fluctuations slowed down a little bit in the temperature. And at that stage, 
both batteries were at the same amount. They'd both used a little over 30%. That suggests to me that the compressor efficiency, the cooling efficiency of the compressor is about equal between both of these. But like I said, it is very hard to judge. In the end, the Iceco fridges did do better. The Jackery was able to run the Costway for 14 and a half hours, while the Iceco with the cover used half the power, running it for an impressive 29 hours. The next test was probably a little closer to the way you'd use these fridges in real life. I pre-cooled them by plugging them into the wall, which I think most people do before a big trip. I recharged the Jackery, plugged it back in, and wanted to see just how long it would last. Even with the fridges pre-cooled, the Costway continued to have fluctuations in the temperature, rising between about 32 and 39 degrees. Occasionally it went above 40. Meanwhile, the ice coast stayed between 34 and 37 degrees, so it had a much more consistent temperature. The Costway also cycled a lot more, and while it's cycling, it's pulling more power. After almost 20 hours, the Costway drained the Jackery battery completely, while the Iceco fridges had used less than half of theirs. At this point, the difference between the Iceco with the cover and the Iceco without isn't obvious. They're both at about half battery, but if I speed up the time lapse a little bit, eventually you'll see that after 39 and a half hours, the Iceco without the cover finally drained the battery, and then an hour and 40 minutes later, the Iceco with the cover drained the battery. In both these tests, the Iceco really surprised me at how well it did. I was expecting it to do a little better just because it's got a little better insulation, it's a little better compressor or name brand compressor. I was not expecting it to double the runtime or use half the power. Based on similarities of the first test I did where I was testing the cooling efficiency, I think that the main reason for that is going to be the difference in the insulation on this. Just uh, it's a lot higher. Like I said earlier, this one's cold to the touch and obviously it's using a lot more power to overcome the lack of insulation. You could add some insulation to this. Uh, you can buy a bag for about $50. You can add some extra insulation padding to the outside. But by the time you've done that, you may as well just go with the Iceco. I also think there's going to be a difference in the compressor. It wasn't hugely obvious, but while the compressor was running, this used about 45 watts of power, which on the Jackery's 13.2 volt regulator output is 3.4 amps, where the Iceco used around 30 watts of power. Obviously, the two tests that I did don't reflect actual real world scenarios. No one's going to pile 20 drinks in and expect their fridge to cool that on their battery. They're going to pre cool their drinks. But if you're out in a really hot desert and constantly putting drinks in to cool them down, then you may find that you are getting that kind of performance. Or on the other hand, if you're somewhere that's a little cooler you and you're not opening it a lot, not putting a lot of drinks in, then you may end up more towards the 40 hour kind of performance. So I'd imagine you'd be somewhere in the middle. What the test did do is show the difference in the performance between the two. So if you're in the hot desert, you can expect the ice coat to last about twice the amount of time. There are some other subtle differences that I noticed while running these two as well. First of them is that the ice coat is a lot quieter. If you're sleeping in your vehicle with the fridge or if you have having a trailer with you, that's something to take into consideration. Another difference is that the Iceco adapter actually stays plugged in. It has been incredibly frustrating with the Costway one. It's constantly coming unplugged. Every time you hit a bump, it comes unplugged. And if you've seen the way my wife drives, you'll know that that happens a lot. I swear there's been times where this fridge has been airborne when she's driving. So taking all of that into consideration, which one of these two should you get? Should you get a cheap, $300, $350 dollar fridge. It cools your food just fine. It does the job. It's $150 cheaper. You can buy a lot of stuff for $150. <laughs> Ultimately, I think the Iceco is the better choice, even if you're only considering the power consumption. If you're using less power, it means you don't have to spend as much on a battery. You could even get away with using uh, switching out your starter battery with an AGM battery and using that. But also, it doesn't have a lot of the annoying quirks of the Costway. It doesn't come unplugged constantly. Your temperature of your food's not going to fluctuate. It's going to keep it a nice, consistent temperature. But I think another big thing to consider is actually the warranty. This comes with a five-year compressor warranty, where the Costway has a 30-day warranty. Hopefully, you enjoyed the comparison between the two. Iceco did send me this for free so I could do the comparison, but I'm also planning on doing a full review of this once I've used it properly for an extended period of time and I can give you maybe a better idea of real world battery consumption. So subscribe to the channel to see that. I put links to both these fridges in the description. If you buy from Amazon, I do get a small percentage of commission directly from Amazon at no extra cost to you. But if you go to the Iceco website, unfortunately I get nothing, but if you use the code REVERE, you get 12% off the Iceco fridge. So that's gonna be the way to go. Thanks for watching.